A solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. The solvent is present in the greatest quantity. Any other substance present is called a solute. So in any solution, there can only be one solvent. There might be more than one solute, but there's only one solvent. Aqueous solutions are those in which water is the dissolving medium. That is, water is the solvent. An electrolyte is any substance whose aqueous solution will conduct electricity. Here are a couple of examples of electrolytes. And the reason that something conducts is because it forms ions in aqueous solution. As opposed to a non-electrolyte, any sugar, here are a couple of chemical formulas that represent sugars, or any alcohol, sugars and alcohols I ask my students to know that any sugar or any alcohol is a non-electrolyte. As a general rule, ionic solids dissociate, that is, they split into ions in aqueous solution. The partial negative charge on the oxygen and the partial positive charge on the hydrogen atoms allow water to interact strongly with and pull out ions in the crystal lattice. Thus, ionic compounds are often, but not always, strong electrolytes. At the bottom of the page, we have a representation of an ionic substance, cation, anion, cation, anion, in this seemingly never-ending lattice in three dimensions. We can imagine taking a solid ionic compound, let's say NaCl, where the Na is positively charged, the Cl is negatively charged, and we drop that into water. The oxygen is more electronegative, so it has a partial negative charge, and the hydrogen is less electronegative, so it has a partial positive charge. In other words, the electrons in these two bonds tend to spend more time nearer the oxygen than they do the hydrogens and for that reason water is a polar molecule. So this partial negative charge is a lowercase Greek delta which means partial charge. That partial negative charge is of course going to be attracted to the cation and that water molecule is of course wiggling and jiggling and translating and it will tend to pull that cation out of the lattice at which point a bunch of other water molecules will glom on. Notice that in each case the negatively charged oxygen is the one that tends to be closest to the cation. And this will happen for all of these different ions. Except, of course, the anions that come out will have the hydrogens closest to them, whereas the cations will have the oxygen in the water molecules closest to them. You can see I have a bunch of guys here, and they're all wearing hats. And they represent the cations and anions. You can think of the dudes as representing the cations and the hats as their anions. Cation, anion, cation, anion, in this never-ending lattice. Typically, when ionic solids dissociate, basically what we're saying is the dudes split up and they lose their hats. So the dudes come apart, they separate from one another, not only that, but they also lose their hats. For molecular compounds, structural integrity of molecules is maintained. The substance may dissolve, but generally won't split into ions. Thus, molecular compounds tend to be non-electrolytes. In other words, if these dudes represent a molecular compound, which consists entirely of nonmetals. If that compound is soluble in water, here's what'll happen. The dudes split up, but they don't lose their hats. Now there are a couple of exceptions. The major ones are acids and ammonia, which when put in aqueous solution do form some percentage of ions. Notice, however, that these substances don't have ions to begin with. They only spontaneously form ions when they go into aqueous solution, which is what this statement at the bottom means. When molecular compounds do form ions, 
like acids and ammonia. It's called ionization, not dissociation. Let's review solution definitions and dissociation versus ionization. 1. A solution is a homogeneous mixture consisting of one or more solutes dissolved in a solvent. The most common solvent is water. Thus, the most common solutions are aqueous solutions. 2. An electrolyte is any substance, the aqueous solution of which will conduct electricity. Solutions of non-electrolytes, for example sugars and alcohols, do not conduct electricity. And 3. Dissociation occurs when ionic substances split into ions. Ionization occurs when molecular substances, like acids, which don't consist of ions, are split apart and end up producing ions in solution.